Today I'm going to be talking about love and other, like reflection of other. And I'll start by some um, class I used to take with Rabbi Ingber from Romumu. He founded the community and um, it also has a location in Manhattan of New York called Romumu. And he had a series of classes where he went through various Hasidic masters. This is from the lineage of Hasidus, um, from Chabad, um, eventually, but also others. So for example, Chabad Lubavitch is one type, um, but there's many other types of Hasidus, and there's many on the way. So some people have heard it as Hasidic, with the H, and that's because it's a strong H. It's like in, in Hebrew language, we'd say Cha. Um, anyway, so... Starting with Reb Sadok, this is what Rabbi Ingber teaches from him, some, some messages. The shadow work is not lovely. It's the ultimate expression of love because nothing stands in the way of returning to love. There is these fractals of sentience, and we would call them like blades of grass. And in the physical world, you have an angel standing over saying, grow, grow. And it's like self-transcendence. It's like, I'm afraid of pressing through the soil, and I'm afraid of letting go of what's behind and I'm, you know, or I don't have enough energy, but it just grow, grow. And it's, it's Eros, right? And it's the ultimate expression of love is willingness. So it like these little blades of grass together creates a field and each blade of grass is, is when it's aware of itself, it knows where it's not as tall as another blade of grass or that it's not fully grown. It knows that also when at, at the peak is when it starts to descend and go down. But love is like this open door. It's what we're all looking for. It's all the souls in one body. And there we would say it's these little parts returning to the whole. When we as individuals can access the whole love, we return to that primordial atom, that rooted, unified, like, whole. Um, I've heard it as turtling. Like, the turtle sticks out its head. You see it's separate. But then when it goes back in, all turtles are in the shell, right? Um, consciousness is a force of nature, like... Um, like because, or, or in other words, for na the force of nature supports consciousness, because the toenail pain can can affect the abilities to settle for the whole body. Even the righteous or realized people have tasted sin and, and interwoven into the into into one stature, right? Because it's like they they're part of a society where people do sin, so everyone has enough to be able to see the the developmental challenges and evolutionary adaptations as part of the collective, um, it, whatever the bad is, whatever the shadow is, the other exists to some degree in everybody. So each blade of grass has to grow. The, you know, growth pains, everybody at any level can identify with growth pain and just being part of the collective of the field, we can see some blades of grass really struggle to, to make it. And this, uh, there's this sense of like, do I really think I'm better than anybody because I'm growing better? We've got to check our spiritual privilege and, uh, and find the negative in ourself. And that's what it is here to be righteous, is the willingness to grow. It is not growing to be looking around and seeing other struggles at growing. So, yes, of course, there's this peripheral and core effect. Like I said, we're all part of the same big field, but, you know, the, the new blood invigorates. Just growing, just being willing to look at ourselves, centers us. Um, filters us, infuses us with vitality and morality. It's the seed of love is the heart. So this willingness to grow out of love, this willingness that why should somebody else have to grow more so that I don't have to grow as much just because we're going to get eaten by the cattle or one day we're going to die. This, uh, this logged on to consciousness, the force of nature pushes it, grow, become conscious, become bigger, expand, right? And then there's this letter shin, shin, shin looks like a uh, half half circle like an oval a half oval with a line down the middle so let's say you have a whole oval cut it in half and then put a line down the middle of the bottom half and it kind of looks like that um, and it's 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 a uh, how it's basically called the fire of creation so the reason I bring this in is because we're talking about growth here and it's actually it's a letter it's a Greek letter which denotes the state of a system so systems like uh, state of where it is at that moment which is which is pretty cool also because it tells us like the the fire of creation is, is always changing and the fire so I want to say one little comment about growth my own personal comment not from Rabbi Ingber or Rabbi Sadok but we have this fire behind us right it's like everything that was in each new moment is totally wiped away into something new 
when we hear of things called spiritual bypassing, where we're growing but at an unregulated rate and we're just like pushing through, some of those spots linger with us and the fire didn't completely destroy it out so that the new creation can happen. So actually, part of healing is sometimes we've got to have these other pieces come into the present moment and get melted by the current fire of creation. Now I'm going to transition to what Rabbi, Rabbi Inger was talking It's okay. It's okay. Um, I'm staying with a friend and there's dogs and somebody just uh, passed by the front door and there's a auto jingle bell. So now I'm going to transition to Rev Cook, who is another of the Hasidic masters, and he says, we all want goodness and holiness, right? So love is the other, I said earlier, love itself brings fresh growth, right? I'm just distinguishing the, the main elements here. So love itself brings fresh growth, lo, um, fresh, fresh vitality and morality. Love itself, just growing, is the seed of consciousness, the heart, right? Love itself... You know, the willingness to grow is the willingness to be part of a collective and it's to return to the, to the unified state of everybody. And that fire of creation cleans up all the mess of what came before. And now it's more about like, um, you know, more than a calf wants to suckle, the cow wants to give milk. So we turn back in penitence out of love of light of truth. So it's like maybe you have one blade of grass starts to bow down to the floor. And instead, it turns back up out of love for the light of the sun. It says, I'm dying like this, and it turns back up. And it's, and it's like if we now bring this into like when we were like worshiping low-level stuff, it's like we start to re regret our baseness, our ugliness, our nothingness. And it's like the story of the spies in, when the Jews were, were going um, to, is to Israel, the land, and um, what they said was they started out with this little tiny bit of truth. They said... Um, you know, it's like this, it's like this. And then they went into these dramatic propaganda. And this question is really, this is the answer really to why we ask the question, to, to why we lie and why we believe lies is because we, it starts with a little tiny bit of truth. Sure, we're growing, but we're growing in the wrong direction. Sure, there's consciousness, but it is not growing in a healthy rate, right? Like I mentioned, it could be like a spiritual bypassing, like I said earlier. So we've got to recognize this divide between the truth that's deepest to me versus all phenomena in my life that are extrapolated or twisted or presented. So it's kind of like we're getting back to that sort. If you're just growing on the left side or just growing on the right side or just growing in the front or just growing in the back, that's like this not growing from the core, right? So we entrust our spirit to godly truth and the hand of God, my Redeemer, is the reprieve. What that means is we cultivate the ability to see and hear the truth the right eyes can see a new, truer story. Can um, So the will itself to grow isn't reaching only towards the front, which makes us bow down, or pulls us only to the back, which makes us fall behind, or to the left or to the right. This true godliness is the reprieve, is the redemption, is the center growth. The center growth is when the will is aspiring for what's real, what's good, what's true. It wants only the pure light. It doesn't want this temporary short-circuiting light. It, it's, we're, we're seeing past, maybe, um, maybe the leaf started, maybe the blade of grass started bending down because there's a little bit of water, and the light was reflecting in the water, and so it started bending towards the water. Oh, this is easy. Look how much light right here. But actually, it became so heavy that it took so much light that it got, had to use much more light than it got from this little bit of water reflection. To lean back up towards the light so it's like we see that the right eyes can see a better truer story we can see a, a story that could live with us that we can live with rather than this like little um this little um nugget here and nugget there and then we have to keep chasing these little bits of truth so what's the platform the platform is educational discipline why is it educational this is why it's this is part of the idea of hasidic masters is because chabad has to do with wisdom knowledge and understanding that for the best of us, in all particularities and uniqueness, the deepest yearning is for the truth. We just want to know. So even though I said earlier, like, it doesn't matter how righteous or how, um, you know, confused one is, in all the, the, the differences that exist between each of us, even neutrally, even when it's not like, oh, morally good, bad, there's this deep, deep, deep desire to know. And that's when our ego can get out of 
control because we want to know even if it's bad. We want to know even if it hurts us. We want to know even if it causes harm. We just need to know. And that's why would people gossip? Why do you need to know that information? And it's because it became out of control. That yearning for the truth or to feel safe really is why we want to know, right? So now we know who we are, what is going on, and where we're headed. But it's not really true. So it's a short-term supply of these little bits of knowledge, right? That's, the, that's eating from the tree of knowledge of opposites. And we think we're so great because we have a little bit of insight, but actually we're not really like discipline. We're not delaying that gratification of knowing. We'll find out more later. More could be revealed. It's always a bigger picture, right? So there's, there's a sense of in our humanness, we elevate our will. We want to not want. It's not that we're, we're, we're degrading wanting. There's nothing wrong with wanting for example, in the subtle realm, we're talking about wanting to know. Um, it's, it's to stop using the desire body, the innate drive. It's a spiritual, in, um, resi it's not a spiritual resignation. It's, um, we're still using the desire drive. In other words, we're not like, uh, we pause. And we realize God wanted creation. God willed it into existence, Right? Wanting does not mean that there's a lack of something or that we don't have it. And wanting does not mean that there's not perfection. So wanting is we got to go with all our devotional power our, toward a motive, to our motivation. It, it's a pushing toward. It's a magnetic impulse to collide with and merge with. It is to elevate that will. It's not to say I want light and I'm going to fall forward or fall back or to the right or left. It's to say I want I want light. That I'm going to stretch toward. And this desire is the fertile ground for cultivation and releasing. What does that mean? It means to the to beloved, right? And and talk to nicely is different than to like so imagine your beloved, you say, you say nice things to them. It's it's something that feeds them from the inside, their true will. They they like who they are around you. They like how they feel around you. This is a much brighter light than giving them a little bit of money or a little bit of sexual pleasure, for example. So um it's going really towards that real light. And I'm going to um, finish today with talking about from Landmark Forum um, how, how we can do this shift from, from unhealthy to healthy love. And so we got to start by saying there's nothing wrong with me or anyone else, right? We just talked about how wanting is not a lack and wanting is not imperfection. Um, you know, it's unhealthy to look at people as a problem we have to figure out or, you know, that it's a victory to make someone else happy. There is... There's a ready pleasure, ease, extraordinary, you know, nature and joy. And we're naturally able to generate and express love. This is what partnership and romance means. So the pastness of love limits. It's, um, it's, it's basically when we're in the stories, the fantasy, the notions and the drama versus a real love sense, which is a function of acceptance. So when we could really love ourselves and we allow our desires to exist, is the first step of recognizing that's our deepest yearning for the truth. True love, for example. So this is like growth, right? It's accepting, um, it's accepting the light. It's growing, right? Accepting the light, the power of the light. The power of the love, right? It doesn't mean we're condoning all the things that happen or succumbing to anything, or agreeing, or giving in, or tolerating, or discord, we are elevating our will to accept the deepest truth. And that requires us to be able to let what is be, and grant what is being. So, um, for example, um, you might have to say that, okay, I have to give up. And we might call this even like a sacrifice in the spiritual sense. We give up being right. We sacrifice judging assessments of them. We sacrifice the attachment to our opinions or being edicts, right? Being ed and then we, we accept someone for exactly what they are and exactly the way they are right now. And this is what um, growth is. The light shines on us no matter who we are, right? Each blade of grass, grow. Grow into yourself. Who you really are, grow. And our desire is to be, be our true self, right? We're awakening it. So it's unconditional um, abandoning um, of, of being abandoned. So this, this unconditional nature of not being dissatisfied with pretending to be more noble or understanding or forgiving and feeling we haven't received enough, right? It's, so we're not going to be abandoned here. We're having the light shining on us no matter what. We just have to be willing to grow. 
Um, the light is always shining on those who want to grow. And um, we're, we're altering our view of the negative impacts of issues to something unfixable, rather to something that needs to be accepted. If we have this urge to fix, to fix, you know, like I said, we're looking around at every other blade of grass and can't love you till you change, right? I can't, I can't love you till you change to accommodate my growth. Is like reflects the relationship with the issue rather than the person. We're not even identifying with the whole self. We're identifying with the part of us that isn't able to grow. And so there's something remarkable that becomes available when we say this is who I am and this is who you are. And now we have new possibilities and actions. It's like there's, it's like living like there someday is a downfall of the relationships. Um, in other words, if you live like someday I'll grow or someday it'll be better, that's what makes the relationship fall apart because that someday is not now. So if it, it erodes, um, and rather if we can assume good intent, you know, an example I heard at this forum was that somebody was talking about somebody who's very messy and dirty. And they said, instead of him being, not dirty, sorry, messy and disorganized. And they said, instead of me looking at it like messy, he's creative, finding new places for things. And it's like, I've not accept, and, and the practice here, the practice here is to let go of who we think someone should be growing into. And to summarize, we, we have to be open to our own growth and see the possibilities. It breaks apart the relationship and we have this expectation of who we're supposed to grow into. And sometimes it's like the issues are growing us. The challenges are growing us. If we're so busy trying to take away all challenges, including other people who present challenges for us at times, we're not actually growing. We're again getting stuck to the left to the right with that little bit of light, right? Like I want to, I want to grow, but I want it to be comfortable so I could grow is, is saying to ourself, I've not accepted the way this person shows love. I've not accepted the way they have this standard that's different than mine. I've not accepted that they have different interests than me. And you can do this with your family, with your friends, with your teachers, with your partners, with your employers and employees and colleagues and acquaintances and neighbors. And it's really like the to practice acceptance here would be to be called granting being, is to be in a growth-oriented environment, means to not be so busy needing everyone else to accommodate our growth because we're so busy growing. But we're not growing out of control, we're growing in such a way that we're actually rooted in ourselves by elevating the will and not taking shortcuts and, and doing like true growth. So I thank you for spending time with me and I look forward to sharing more, perhaps um, on a similar topic, tomorrow.